Miami is one of the fastest growing cities in the U.S. Florida's beautiful beaches and quality of life attract more than 300,000 residents annually. But Miami is also on the front lines of climate change impacts, such as sea level rise, excessive rainfall, extreme heat, and storm surge. This makes it one of the most vulnerable major coastal cities in the world, with hundreds of billions of assets at risk from climate change. At the center of all of it is Biscayne Bay. Biscayne Bay is a shallow tropical estuary. It's really the jewel that we've built our community around. It supports really diverse wildlife. We have over a dozen threatened and endangered species that call Biscayne Bay home. Biscayne Bay fuels a booming tourism-based economy, contributing more than 12 billion in economic output, supporting over 138,000 jobs, and generating more than 600 million in tax revenue annually. Over 80% of the tourists that come to Miami go in the water. We have hundreds of billions of dollars of real estate and the most valuable properties are those with views of beautiful Biscayne Bay. We also have commercial and recreational fishing. It's one of the best sailing bays in the world. But in spite of all of this, sea level rise is an inevitable fact that is already impacting people's lives here. Miami's really ground zero for sea level rise. We have the most resources at risk worldwide, and that's because of the hundreds of billions of dollars of buildings that ring our waterfront essentially at sea level. Without adaptation and resilience measures, Miami is projected to have more than 3.5 trillion in assets and nearly 4.8 million people at risk of flood exposure by 2070. This looming projection, amongst others, has led to the realization that something must be done now. The Army Corps of Engineers have been charged with developing a solution to this problem. Unfortunately, their proposed solution not only fails to address all the problems Miami is facing due to climate change, but it introduces new problems. The proposal that they have developed is a lot of gray infrastructure and it's looking at building walls and floodgates, which potentially makes sea level rise, daily flooding that we're going to have to deal with worse, as well as dividing communities by building walls and picking winners and losers. So if you're on the wrong side of the wall, you might have worse flooding. In addition to being very expensive and having what is now an estimated $4.6 billion price tag that we think is actually an underestimate. It really doesn't include much green infrastructure at all. Swire Properties, the developer of Brickell City Center, has taken a proactive role in trying to move the conversation about sea level rise toward a more hybridized resilience concept. Miami is currently the, the poster child for the effects of climate change. We believe there's a great opportunity for Miami to take leadership in this area. We basically engaged uh, Moffat and Nickel in order to help look at the Army Corps of Engineers' response to storm surge and sea level rise. I think we can help apply some of our own thoughts and, and guide the conversation in a very constructive way that not only helps tackle the problem, but actually it could be an ongoing benefit to the community at large. The solution proposed by Swire utilizes a combination of natural and engineered features that aims not only to combat catastrophic storm surge, but also adapt to sea level rise and flooding, as well as help preserve Biscayne Bay. Instead of a concrete wall in Biscayne Bay, an underwater oyster reef will act as the first line of defense against the incoming waves and surge, followed by a line of mangroves. Both serve as protection, as well as habitat, while sequestering carbon naturally. Public access will be improved with a boardwalk and greenery overlooking mangroves and shoreline. This blended approach will also protect underlying wetlands, which act as water storage and additional seagrass habitats. Smaller scale, more strategically placed seawalls will serve as another line of defense. 
These solutions have already been done in many other cities. They've been done in New York, they've been done in Canada. Nature-based solutions are nothing new. They're also not necessarily more expensive. In fact, in many cases, they're actually more cost-effective. They can be adapted over time to meet you know, the changes of the problem. A simple solid wall is almost certainly the wrong course of action to take. Communities face not only natural threats, such as hurricanes, but also the social and economic pressures that often accompany them. Five to six feet of sea level rise by 2100 would displace 800,000 Miami-Dade County residents, a third of the population. Historically, communities of color were regulated to inland areas as wealthier residents sought the more desirable waterfront neighborhoods closer to Florida's beaches. But now, with increasing climate pressures and sea level rise, wealthier residents are moving inland, threatening to displace low-income communities and communities of color, causing climate gentrification. It is super important to have residents at the table when development is happening. I mean, we've heard so many countless stories of you know, families that, you know, are about to be pushed out or have been pushed out because you have development encroaching onto their community. So I really worry about those families that go from more protected areas because of elevation and then move to somewhere that's lower elevated. 40% of Miami-Dade County households are considered working poor with little savings and few assets. These households do not have the financial resources to bounce back from a disaster caused by sea level rise and hurricanes. I think the best case scenario for when we're building that infrastructure is to ensure that communities are included from the very beginning of the process. What we've seen oftentimes is that the developers, the commissioners, whoever's in power has already created their project. And then it's super late in the process where they might have like one off meeting with community members and then at that point it's too late. I think there's an amazing opportunity here to demonstrate to the world that, you know, the challenges can be met and they can be met in a really um, effective and artful way. We have the natural ecosystems here that lend themselves perfectly to doing these projects. Now we just need the political will to put them into practice. We can make Miami an example for the rest of the country of how to do these projects, how to react to sea level rise, and to make our community more resilient while improving the environment and our community and our quality of life and our economy. Environmental Defense Fund is committed to work with urgency to help all communities in Florida become more resilient to the very real threats that sea level rise and hurricanes pose to our state. That means plans that protect communities from flooding while not sacrificing their quality of life, their environment, and the tourism-based economy that make our state the ecological, economic, and cultural treasure that it is. To do this, Florida leaders must prioritize natural and nature-based solutions like mangroves instead of the engineered, hardened gray infrastructures like seawalls. We need solutions that help create wildlife habitat, improve water quality, reduce urban heat, sequester carbon, adapt to sea level rise over time, and create jobs and economic benefits EDF wants to see communities empowered and leaders letting individuals define a better future. Our community leaders can empower stakeholders and strengthen the resilience of our ecosystem and families and businesses by implementing natural infrastructure solutions now before the next disaster occurs. And we can do all of this while keeping Florida, Florida.